The Boxster has been Porsche's entry-level model for well over 15 years now. Here's the third generation, the 981. How will it stand up to the competition? Let's find out. All new for 2013, they've stretched the wheelbase for better performance and handling. You might be able to tell from looking that it's a hair a bit longer, but what you can't tell is that it's now 40% stiffer. I think the first version, the 986, really looked like the original 550 Speedster made famous by James Dean. But with this one, you can still see the family resemblance. This being a Porsche, you might think you'd find the engine back here, but no. What you get is a surprisingly usable trunk. You also add coolant in the trunk as well as oil. Of course, with the Boxster being a mid-engine car, you open the front and, well, there's more storage, but no engine. So you've got two different storage areas and that's nice and convenient. The interior is also all new and it's modeled after the 991, 911 and the Panamera. The interior is really striking. This is the optional all leather package and everything is leather. Even the dash. This one comes with the Sport Seats Plus and they're firmer and more supportive with bigger side bolsters. Not really too much storage back here unless of course you're pretty short. This being a Porsche they know how to do a dash. And you've got a huge tachometer right in front, speedometer right here, and over here, information screen. Very helpful. In the center console, there's a bit of storage there. Plug in for your phone as well. And here's the buttons for your top and the sport button. You also get this button here, A, which actually will turn the engine off at a stoplight and save you on gas. This one, put the spoiler up and down manually for cleaning. And this one is a traction control, which you should only turn off if you really know what you're doing. Six speed manual shifter there, controls for your climate control, and then of course your infotainment screen. Basically, very straightforward. Sporting, nothing you don't need, and that's very welcome in a serious sports car. The cup holder setup is pretty interesting. How about that? German engineering. They've really thought of everything. You even get an umbrella built right in. Of course, the pedals are placed well for heel and toe shifting. All in all, this being a Porsche, it's very well thought out and very well engineered. Even the key looks like a Porsche, very impressive. And of course, you put it in on the left side of the steering wheel, and that's for the traditional Grand Prix start. This is really the closest I can get to showing you a shot of the engine because of course, it's hidden in the middle. But just know that it is powered by a 2.7 liter flat six, which makes 265 horsepower and 205 pound feet of torque. That'll get you to 60 in about five and a half seconds onto a top speed of over 150 miles an hour. Fuel economy is rated at 20 miles per gallon in the city and 30 on the highway. Pretty impressive for such a fast car. So pricing for the Boxster starts out at $49,500 and there's a lot of competition within about $8,000 of that. It starts out with the Infiniti G37, which is a very confident car, lots of technology in that one too. And of course, you have the German competitors, the Mercedes SLK, you also have the BMW Z4, and of course the Audi TTS is in there also. So all German engineered and all very nice two-seat convertibles. But this one, I think, has a slight advantage. Why? Because it is a Porsche. When you think of a two-seat sports car that's a convertible, what else are you gonna think of? Porsche, there is no substitute. So when the original Boxster came out, I was just a huge fan. I mean, that shape, it just conjured up images of 
James Dean and his little bastard 550 Speedster. And this one really carries it on. And basically, you get it all, but you get it all in a modern, safe package. And in terms of being a pure Porsche, well, of course, it is the entry-level model. Even the Cayman is more expensive. Go figure, that one has a top and it's $4,000 more. But this one really is a pure Porsche in that it creates all the right sounds from behind you. You know, there's that mid-engine. Now, it's not a rear engine like the 911, but it is that great screaming sound coming from right behind you. And so it gives you the same sort of feeling. Now, I'm definitely a purist. I do have a classic 80s 911, and I do love the 911, but you know, as much as I like to say that the 911 is the only pure Porsche, the Boxster here is very good and it does conjure up some of the same feelings. Plus, it doesn't cost $80,000 either. So I'm going to do the conversion here to make it a convertible and it takes just nine seconds. And it's also about 55 degrees outside. I'm going to put the windows down and uh, crank the heat up here. And uh, okay, it's a little bit chilly, but you can still drive this car pretty much year round depending on where you live. Of course, if you live in a snowy region, well, you gotta be careful, because this, of course, is rear-wheel drive, but it does have that mid-engine, which gives it a nice balance. So technically, you could drive it year-round, even with the top down. So back in the day, Porsche was going through some pretty tough times, and they had to think of something. And what they thought of was the Porsche Cayenne, an SUV. And SUVs were selling like hotcakes and they were smart to bring it out because basically it saved the company. Now, I'm a purist and I thought it was sacrilegious, but while it's a bad thing for the purist, it's a good thing for the company. And it's because of the Cayenne that cars like this Boxster and the Panamera have come along. So I'm definitely a purist, I believe that no 911 is worthy after 1998 because they're all water-cooled now and I like the air-cooled history and I just like the fact that it's just like a beetle basically on steroids. I love that. No radiator, no overheating. Even though I'm a purist, I'm glad that they came out with Cayenne because it's brought us cars like the Boxster here and the Porsche legacy continues. Now this is what you want in your Porsche Boxster. Fall day top down windy road you can really bring it out a bit and uh, the Porsche response it's mid-engine it's perfectly balanced and uh, best of all you've got the top down for alfresco motoring nice challenging road and even though there's some leaves and maybe some slippery areas you don't worry because you know that the Porsche has your back This is what it's all about, right here. So with the Porsche Boxster, I really think its greatest competition is itself. Sure, there's the SLK Mercedes, there's the Z4, the Infiniti G37, Audi TT. Yeah, they're great cars too, but again, this is a Porsche, and I think that's also its greatest competitor the 911. A lot of people that buy the Boxster, I think, probably really want to buy a 911, but the 911 starts at about $80,000, and this one starts at 45, it's about half. Now you can move up to the Boxster S, but you're looking at about $60,000 there. So even the Cayman, that's $4,000 more than this one. So this one is a pure Porsche, it's a convertible, and you do have that great engine growl back there so it's a purebred Porsche now yes I am stuck on the 911 I love my classic 911 I love the fact that it's rear-engined and if I'm in the turn hard like I'm about to be right here that if I get scared and lift off well 
I'll probably spin. I like that danger factor, but this one is well balanced, and why? Because it's a mid-engine car. So with the Boxster here, what you do have is a well-engineered, neutral handling, convertible sports car. And to me, that's all you want. And speaking of pure car design, I do like the fact that when you look out over the hood of the Boxster, you can easily identify it as a Porsche Boxster. Nice fender flares and just a great shape. So basically what you're getting with the Porsche Boxster is an all new car that's been redesigned to fit in better with the current 911 and even the Panamera. The interior is similar, it's been upgraded, it's faster, it's lighter, it's stiffer. Basically you're getting a better car all around and it still is a Porsche, you know? It's got the engine behind you just whining away and it's got excellent handling and uh, it's a lot of fun to drive and it's exotic but yet it's easy to maintain and uh, easy to live with on a daily basis. That about says it all. I'm driving Ivan Katz.